we are going to discuss about um, restless earth, that is geography. So this topic normally has about three subtopics, that is tectonic plates, uh, volcanicity, <coughs> earthquakes. Now, with tectonic plates, we tend to talk about plate boundaries. Now, with plate boundaries, this is uh, the Earth's crust divided into giant pieces known as uh, tectonic plates. Now, these giant pieces are constantly or gradually moving. Now, the cause of this movement is uh, as a result of convection currents underlying the Earth's crust. We will talk about convection currents uh, later on. So, the first type of plate boundary is known as the constructive plate boundary. Uh, this is where plates diverge or move away from each other. The second type is known as the collision plate boundary, where plates of the same type move towards each other. Right? So we have what we call the continental plate and continental plate in most cases moving towards each other, forming what we call a fold mountains. Then we also have what is known as transform plate boundaries, where plates slide past each other. Uh, then of note, we also have what we call destructive plate boundary, sometimes known as convergent plate boundary, where the oceanic plates, the crust over which the oceans lie, and the continental plates, the crust over which land lies, will meet, and as a result, one gets subducted underneath because of different densities. Okay, so let's start off with the constructive plate boundary. Now, as you can see, if I am to perhaps uh, annotate this, uh, maybe, if I am to annotate this with uh, this laser pointer, you can see uh, the direction of these arrows. This is a reflection of what we call uh, convection currents. Now, underneath the Earth's crust, convection currents are found in the mantle, which is just beneath the Earth's crust. Now, at this point, the convection currents are moving away from each other. This then causes the overlying plates, which is in this case the oceanic plate. This will cause the oceanic plate to move uh, aside or to part ways. Now, the convection currents moving aside will create tensional forces, which then cause a line of weakness or gap known as a fissure. This results in the magma rising and escaping through that fissure and as a result we end up having a volcanic volcanic mountain also in the process that more that magma that escapes known as lava will cool down and in some instances form ridges all right now uh, sometimes the ridge might rise above the sea level and then we may end up having island arcs as a result and one such good example is Hawaii. It's an example of an island that created by uh, the diverging convectional uh, plates. Now, two plates are moving apart, diverge from each other in opposite directions. Convection currents moving in opposite direction in the mantle move the two plates apart. Convection currents moving in opposite direction cause an intense heat in the interior, obviously move the two plates apart. Now, continuing, uh, the magma fills the gap and eventually erupts onto the surface and cools as new land. Huge ridges of undersea mountains and volcanoes such as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge are a perfect example of this. And, as mentioned, where these mountains poke above the level of the sea, island arcs are created. And now a simpler version of the diagram. This is known as the constructive margin and also known as the divergent, because to diverge is to move apart. And you can see that the mantle, inside the mantle, convection currents are moving apart, and as a result, the oceanic plates will move apart to create a space which results in magma escaping. Now, uh, we have another simpler version where we've got the oceanic crust and the oceanic crust. Sometimes when the oceanic crust and oceanic crust, or when the oceanic 
So when the oceanic crust diverges, it is also known as sea flow spreading. Now, effects in volcanoes can result in these marine salts. They may at times ask what kind of landforms or activities happen at the obstructive or divergent plate boundaries. So we end up having earthquakes, uh, but they are mild as compared to the destructive plate boundary and volcanoes. The earthquakes uh, are caused by the movement of magma through the crust. So as the magma forces its way through the crust, mild earthquakes are okay. A really good example is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge where the Eurasian plate moves away from the North American plates. So you need to take note of also some of the plates that result in certain landforms forming. Now, I want us to talk about the destructive plate boundary. Now, with the destructive plate boundary, two plates move or converge together and destruction of one of the Earth's crust results. The oceanic plates, which is denser, is pushed towards the continental plates by convection currents deep within the Earth's interior. Oceanic plate is subducted or pushed under the continental plate at what is called a subduction zone. So if you can see on this picture here, we have an oceanic plate known as the Nazca plate. That's probably South America. And then we've got the South American plate moving towards uh, the oceanic plate. But because the oceanic plate is denser as specified, just like water and oil, that which is denser goes below. So the oceanic plate then goes below and is subducted into the mantle and exposed to intense heat because we've got molten rock already in the mantle. Due to friction that occurs on the subduction zone and also the heat that the continental oceanic plate is exposed to in the mantle, the oceanic plate will melt. But because the earth cannot expand, the excess molten rock results in a lot of pressure. And uh, this pressure will force the excess molten rock to escape through lines of weakness. And because normally when the continental plate uh, meets with the oceanic plate, it tends to buckle and we end up having fold mountains forming as well and volcanoes forming. But during that process, lines of weakness are created, which will also allow the excess molten rock to escape through those lines of weakness, creating volcanic mountains. So volcanic mountains are also found on the destructive plate boundary. Now, the oceanic plate is abducted, pushed under the continental plate at what is called the subduction zone. This results in the creation of a deep oceanic trench. And also another landform that is created is an oceanic trench. Now, as you can see on my pointer here, we have a trench, a V-shaped trench as a result of the oceanic plate sinking underneath the continental plate. A simpler version, as you can see, there is the oceanic plate and the continental plate. The oceanic plate is subducted under and because of that we end up having molten rock, uh, excess molten rock, because the earth cannot expand to accommodate the uh, excess molten rock. The molten rock then forces its way up through lines of weakness and as a result we end up having volcano. Another issue is that earthquakes are also experienced, in fact intense earthquakes, because of the friction that occurs between the oceanic plate and the continental plate. We also have V-shaped valleys being formed and volcanic mountains, as well as fold mountains uh, are created. Now, I want to talk about collision plate boundaries. Now, with collision plate boundaries, we have fold mountains forming as well. But collision plate boundaries okay when a continental crust and another continental crust uh, meet. Because they are of the same density, no plate is subducted or destroyed, but they both crumble and rise upwards, creating fold mountains. So a collision plate boundary is formed when two continental plates collide. An example is that of the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate. We we'll also have a chance to look at the atlas and at least identify where the Eurasian plate is found and the Indian plate. Now, the two
two plates of similar density are forced towards each other. Instead of subduction, the two plates crumble or crumple into one another and fold mountains and fold upwards into fold mountains. A fantastic example, obviously, is the Himalayas mountain range where we have uh, Mount Everest as well as the Alps in Italy. Here, the Indo Australian plate is colliding with the Eurasian plate. So we may have the Eurasian plate and we may have the Indo Australian plate. And then they create the Himalayas mountain range. If you've ever heard of uh, Mount Everest, uh, which is obviously the tallest mountain uh, on Earth, it's found along the Himalayas mountain range. Lastly, we have the transform plate boundary. Now, with the transform plate boundary, uh, plates uh, slide past each other. So two plates either slide past each other in opposite direction, and sometimes they, they move past each other as well as different speeds. As they move past each other, stress energy builds as the plates snag and grind onto one another. In other words, the plates aren't always moving, but they tend to uh, snag. Uh, there is a temporal load because they are uneven. Their edges are uneven. But as they snag, pressure builds up. When this stress energy is eventually released, it sends shock waves through the Earth's crust. So transform plate boundaries may be associated with earthquakes. So that's how generally earthquakes form. Earthquakes form in two ways, in fact, when a continental and oceanic plates converge, uh, the friction between the oceanic and continental plate causes those earthquakes, and as well as when plates slide past each other. When uh, these plates slide past each other, uh, they tend to snag, and as pressure builds up for them to continue moving, eventually they are released past each other and shock waves. And where the earthquake originates is known as the focus. And the place above the focus is known as the epicenter. It is from the epicenter that obviously earthquakes, uh, shock waves, are distributed in concentric circles or rings. And the place closest to the epicenter experiences um, the most effects of the earthquake. And the earthquake tends to be less effective uh, as we move away from the epicenter. Now, a good example is the San Andreas Fault in California, where the Pacific Plate is moving northwest at a faster rate than the North American Plate. You might also get the opportunity to look at where those are exactly located. Now, we have uh, another image of the transform plate boundary. Now, we've got a conservative plate margin. Sometimes a transform plate boundary is also known as a conservative plate margin. Now here you can see that this is the North American plate and the Pacific plate obviously is, a, is partly an oceanic plate. They are moving at different speeds. The Pacific plate is moving at a faster speed, whereas the continental plate is moving at a slower speed. And as a result, this creates a drag and snag effect. And now, uh, to conclude, we have the atlas itself. You can see that we've got the North American plate and the Pacific plate, as you can see. Now, the Pacific plate is moving faster than the North American plate, and the key here says it's a conservative margin, and hence, that's a transfer plate boundary. You can see the NASA plate that we were also talking about, the continental plate, and the oceanic plate, and the continental plate creating what we call a destructive plate margin. And this is an indication of volcanic mountains. Those small triangles, those are mountain ranges and volcanic uh, mountains as well. So we end up having a subduction zone occurring here because the continental plate is subducted, the oceanic plate is subducted under the continental plate. And this is where we have the Eurasian plate and the Indo-Australian plate. And we have what we call a collision margin, as this key indicates here. You can see that this is the collision margin. Here we end up having fold mountains forming because there is an oceanic and a continental plate and a continental plate meeting and creating what we call fold mountains.